Hi guys. So I want to read this story to y'all that is coming out of the West Coast. This is a video that every single parent or guardian should listen to. And I know, I know I'm not a parent, but I don't need to be to deliver this video. This is so scary. And I had briefly heard about it back when the guy was arrested, but I didn't hear anything until currently. And it automatically, I was like, I really need to make a video about that because it reminded me of how scary this situation was, especially for anybody who is caring for um, kids. I've said before, I mean, I understand why parents don't allow their kids to do sleepovers fully understand it and I fully respect it and this is one of the reasons why. So we're talking about Michael Maiden today. Michael is 57 years old and it says he pled not guilty to charges accusing him of, him of drinking three 12 year old girls staying at his house for a sleepover with his daughter. A 12 year old girl's decision to not drink an allegedly spiked smoothie at a friend's sleepover last summer proved vital when she managed to get a ride home in the middle of the night and alert her parents that her friends might be drugged. A probable cause affidavit obtained by People says. Investigators allege the 57 year old Michael Maiden had laced a batch of smoothies with benzodiazepines and insisted his young daughter and her three friends drink them before going to bed, according to the affidavit. Maiden turned himself in to the Lake Os Oswego Police Department last week and pleaded not guilty to nine felony and misdemeanor charges, including causing another person to ingest a controlled substance. The department said, in a news release. His bond was set at $50,000 and county jail records reviewed by people show he's no longer in custody. So this monstrosity of a guy is not even in custody right now. That is super scary. It continues and says two of Maiden's daughters Friends drank the smoothies during the August 25th sleepover and soon allegedly fell into a thick, deep sleep. One of the girls told the police the next day, according to the uh, affidavit. Police met the three girls who stayed over at Maiden's house and their parents at the hospital the following morning. The girls' parents became concerned when two of the girls required help walking and could not recall what happened to them the night before. With one girl telling police, Police that she blacked out after drinking two of the smoothies. The mango smoothies allegedly had small white chunks in them and white powder on top, the girls told police, alleging that Maiden gave each of them a unique colored straw to use, the affidavit claims. The girl who managed to alert her parents later in the night had decided to not finish her drink after taking a sip and complaining about the taste. She alleged to investigators that Maiden made her a new smoothie, which she also didn't like and didn't finish. Maiden allegedly later became upset with the girl, according to the affidavit, and accused the girl and his daughter of switching straws between their first and second cup. What a scary, scary individual to not only think that he literally was a father himself, but he had these young children in his home doing this to literal children. The girl stayed up for about another hour talking and watching TV, according to the affidavit. Two of the girls visiting the Maiden's house shared a pull-out couch in the basement, while Maiden's daughter and the other friend shared a bed in an adjacent bedroom. The girl who didn't drink this smoothie pretended to be asleep when Maiden came in a short while later and allegedly began doing tests to make sure the girl sleeping next to her was asleep. She alleged to police Maiden was placing his finger under her friend's nose and waving his hand in front of her face, according to the affidavit. Finally, he allegedly removed the girl's arm from around her friend and began to separate them on the pull-out couch they were sharing. When Maiden went back upstairs for a moment, the girl began frantically calling and texting her mom before reaching out to several friends. One of the messages that she sent her mom said, Mom, please pick me up and say I had a family emergency. She sent that at 1.43 in the morning. I don't feel safe. I might not respond, but please, please come get me. 
with a crying emoji, please, please pick me up, please, please. How heartbreaking and scary for this girl. Her mother did not respond. The girl was able to reach a friend who sent their mom to the maiden's house. The girl told maiden she had a family emergency and he did not try to stop her from leaving. Once home, she woke up her parents and told them what happened. Her parents then reached out to the other two girls' parents who then went to maiden's house around 3 a.m. to pick up their daughters. I realize this probably isn't a good time for me to be um, what some people might call judgmental, but if your child is not in your home and they're staying in a friend's house overnight, that might be a point in time to make sure that your phone ringer is on extra loud and maybe even hook it up to a Bluetooth speaker to make sure that it wakes you up if you get a text. Um, I'm sure that her parents feel very guilty, so I'm trying to not be too harsh in what I'm saying here, but, you know, if if you are going to let your kids sleep over, I would think there should be more than one manner in which you make sure that you can hear your phone if it goes off. Later that morning, they decided to, to take the girls to nearby Randall Children's Hospital, where all three of the 12-year-old girls tested positive for benzodiazepine, according to the affidavit. Police obtained a search warrant later that night and confiscated, confiscated a Vitamix blender, a mortar and pestle, cups, straws, tramadol, and five bottles of ta Tamzepam from Maiden's home, per the affidavit. Less than two months after the incident last summer, Maiden got divorced from his wife of 16 years. He's now living in Vancouver, Washington, according to local KIR Kiro 7. And Maiden's attorney was quoted saying he is presumed innocent and we hope that the people will reserve judgment until all of the facts and circumstances are known. So that is a super scary situation and it could have ended even worse than what it did. Obviously, there's always something that can be worse than it is, but that's bad enough. And I want to know, I've mentioned sleepovers before, and that's another reason why I wanted to cover this topic. How do y'all feel? If your parents are guardians of kids, how do you feel about overnight stays? Are they like a complete no-go? Are you um, reserving that until the kids are a little older? How do you feel about that? Because I just, you know, unfortunately we live in a world where even parents, parents themselves can be unhinged, creepy weirdos and it poses a big risk to kids and it's really sad. Um, speaking from my own experience, you know, my dad was strictly no sleepovers um, until I was about 15 and then he let me do a couple, but even then it was not, um, I think I might've done two. It's a scary world, but I wanted to share that with y'all and kind of gauge your opinion on the sleepover thing since I've mentioned it in the past. If you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.